Senator Seawitt. Uh, thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I seek leave to take notice of, in fact, a number of the, the, the Senate responses to the Senate resolutions, um, but specifically at the moment I'd like to take, uh, take note of the Minister Hunt's um, response on the shark motion. Is leave granted? Leave's granted. Senator Seawitt. Thank you, um, Mr Acting Deputy President. I note um, the response by Minister for the Environment, um, Greg Hunt, to the passing of the Senate's resolution of the West Australian Government's Shark Hazard Mitigation Drumline Program, commonly known in Western Australia as the Shark Cull, where he um, makes uh, several points, but in particular talks about the, uh, that he's now requested an assessment of the environmental impacts of an extended shark uh, mitigation, so-called shark mitigation program for three years. Of course, he should never have exempted the uh, last uh, shark cull in Western Australia that had, um, didn't catch any great white sharks but did catch an excessive number of tiger sharks, and I'll come back to that point in a minute. But finally, he has requested an assess or required an assessment of the uh, three-year program. Um, which he, under the bilateral agreement, of course, the state of Western Australia is carrying out. So here you have the state of Western Australia, the proponent of the, dra of the shark cull, um, now being the body responsible for the assessment of that program. And if you look at the public environmental review document that was released and comments are due, four-week comment period, comments are due on the 7th of July. But if you look at some of the fundamentals of this program. I don't see how the minister can do anything else but reject this program. The program will kill, or will, will, um, is predicted to kill 300 tiger sharks annually. That's 900 tiger sharks, and the report acknowledges that they'll probably only catch around 25 great white sharks over that period, over that three-year period. So we're sacrificing 900 tiger sharks. There is no formal stock assessment of tiger sharks population found off WA. We also know from the 2014 shark cull program that there were th th three female tiger sharks for every male tiger shark caught. We don't know, in fact, what impact it is that um, that program, taking that many female breeding uh, tiger sharks, we don't know what impact that is going to have on the, on the uh, tiger shark population. Um, great white sharks, in fact, have been the shark identified for those fatal shark attacks off the coast of Western Australia. So there is no justification for taking 900 tiger sharks through this culling program. The great white sharks we know are highly, highly migratory, so even if they do catch one, it is not going to reduce the, the uh, possibility um, of individuals being um, taken or attacked by a great white shark. We know that uh, the uh, great white shark population off the coast of Western Australia hasn't rebounded, contrary to some of the claims, extraordinary claims made in the PER about the number of great white sharks and the population of great white sharks suddenly up um, they're making ridiculous claims of 5,400 individuals when research shows, that's, research shows that there's around 700 mature breeding animals. Um, and all of a sudden, with no justification, the government's now claiming there's over 5,000 great white sharks. The other issue, the uh, great concern with the PER is that they're acting as if these shark, cull and drum lines are the only possibility in terms of dealing with shark mitigation. It doesn't adequately assess um, shark, uh, environmentally friendly shark barriers, for example, or the personal safety devices or shark spotters from South Australia. Great holes in this PER. But of course, it's predicated on the fact that they think that a cull is actually going to um, stop and it, it's false that provide stop great white shark attacks, but also predicated, but but also um, puts forward to the public a um, a false sense of security. This program not only is a waste of money; it is based on fallacious information. 
It will kill nearly a thousand tiger sharks that are not the target species, a population that has not been adequately studied. It won't improve safety. It, it, the majority of Western Australians don't support the shark cull. They, in fact, want to look at alternative methods. The government claims that it's reduced tourism, that, it, that the shark attacks will in fact reduce tourism, where the overwhelming feedback that we've had is that in fact it reduces tourism because people don't want to come to a state where they're killing sharks, where they're killing tiger sharks and where they're, they're trying to kill great white sharks. The government claims that they did, uh, they did some monitoring of the sharks, uh, tagging of the sharks that were caught and released. Now, they also acknowledge that they can't guarantee that those sharks that actually catch and release will actually survive. And the tagging that they did was putting plastic tags, most of them were just plastic tags, on the fins of the sharks that they released. And as I said, they don't even know if they've been able to say those sharks have, in fact, um, survived. The, the government also claims that they'll carry out this shark cull in, humane, in a humane manner. Well, if what they did over the months from January to April in Western Australia in 2014 is an example of their humane treatment, they've got a lot to learn about humane treatment. There is photos of sharks with a hook through their head, through their mouth, um, the way that they were brought onto boats. It was, could no, in nobody's wildest imagination could you ever say that those sharks were dealt with humanely. Photos of contractors over the side of the boat stabbing sharks that were on the drum lines. For a start, if you're humane, you don't use the hooks that they used on the drum lines. You use circular hooks for a start that don't damage and kill sharks. Sharks were left on hooks dangling for hours on end and were, and, uh, and were attacked by other sharks. That's not humane. This program didn't work in this summer. It won't work next summer or the summer after that or the summer after that. And the government seems to have forgotten one of the key facts as well, is that of the seven attacks that they reference, five of them were in periods when they don't intend to put drum lines in the water. This is another expensive PR exercise from the Barnett government. The federal government should never have facilitated it in the first place. They shouldn't facilitate it any further and should uphold their responsibilities to protect the marine environment, to protect the great white shark and to protect the other species that are covered by the various conventions and responsibilities under the Environmental Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act. This is a flawed policy. It is not supported by West Australians. They don't do this in our name. And we urge the federal government to carefully assess this PER and reject it, because on, by any standards, this is a substandard PER. It does not protect the great white shark, and it doesn't protect humans. The Barnett government needs to think again. It needs to come back with a mitigation program that doesn't rely on killing nearly a thousand tiger sharks, that will kill great white sharks, which are vulnerable. And I will remind people that the great white shark is listed as a vulnerable species under the Environmental Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act and should therefore be protected, as should the other species. For example, there were some short fin makos that were caught during the last cull and could be caught again. They have been nominated as a vulnerable species. They are recognised on the red list internationally, as are tiger sharks, by the way, um, recognised by, by the IUCN. This is a flawed policy. It should be abandoned, and the federal government should not facilitate it for one further minute. <laughs>